This discussion of the genetic code lets us talk about mutations. And before we discuss that, I think it's important to make a note that mutations are referring to changes in the structure of the DNA because that is passed on and replicated and continuously used and can be inherited. If there's just an error in the transcription of RNA, that won't be nearly as significant because it is only going to affect that one transcript, so it would only affect the production of that one protein. And transcription happens frequently, and so there are a lot of chances to get it right. However, there are many different types of mutations, and they're classified into two groups. There are point mutations where the DNA is removed from one position, so you have one base that is removed and another base that is put in in its place. That often happens during errors of replication, for example, and those can be preserved and passed down for many, many cell cycles. Point mutations involve removing one base and replacing it with a different one. There are also frame shift mutations, and frame shift mutations are when you either add or remove bases. And that has an interesting effect because it completely changes the reading frame and pushes the whole chain of nucleotides back or forward. And so we'll start with the discussion of the point mutations. One type of point mutation is known as a silent mutation. And what that means is that, yes, you've changed one of the bases, but it does not change the identity of the amino acid that is coded for it. So, for example, you might have something like UUC, which codes for phenylalanine, and you could perhaps replace that UUC with a UUU, and then you'd have UUU, and that would still encode for phenylalanine. And so there will be no effect on the protein that is produced as a result of that mutation. So a silent mutation means that, yes, there has been a mutation, but it has no effect. It's completely silent because you still get the exact same sequence of amino acids because you just happened to rely on a feature of the degenerative code that says that there are several different codons that can code for the same amino acid. And in a way, it's a lucky mutation that doesn't change the identity of the amino acid whatsoever. So that's the silent mutation. That has no adverse effects whatsoever. You can have a missense mutation. And so let's just say that we had the UUC of phenylalanine and we replaced it with a UUA. So now we have UUA, which codes for leucine. This may or may not have a significant effect because what you've done is you've taken one of the amino acids and changed it into an, a different amino acid. The rest of the protein remains in the same form, it has the same sequence of amino acids, it's the same length. And a missense mutation may or may not have a significant effect. If it is significant in that the type of amino acid has very different properties, it may cause misfolding of the protein or perhaps a protein that isn't quite the right shape and thus fails to perform its appropriate function. So missense can be an issue. Other times, let's just say that we're trading one nonpolar amino acid for another nonpolar amino acid, it might have very minimal effect on the shape of the protein. And so that will not be a highly significant mutation, but it won't be silent either because you are changing the identity of one of those components. Then we can have something called a nonsense mutation. And this is a very serious one. This is referred to as a deleterious mutation because it significantly alters the structure of the protein. What that essentially means is that nonsense means that you have encoded now for a premature stop codon. So let's say we had a tyrosine here, UAC, and instead of UAC, it now became a UAA. That would now encode a stop codon where there was previously a tyrosine, and everything downstream of that would not be translated by the ribosome. And so you'd have a shorter protein and very likely a defective one. Now, I've used a lot of situations where our point mutation has been in the third codon position, but it can be anywhere. 
It could be that we go, instead of from a UAC to a UAA, we could go from something like a CAA, which is glycine, and replace that C with a uracil and turn it into UAA, which is a premature stop codon. Whenever there is a point mutation that results in a premature stop codon, that is called a nonsense mutation, and that significantly alters the structure of the protein. It will be shorter, and very likely it will not be a functional protein. And so that's a type of deleterious mutation that's caused by a point mutation. Just one base changing can cause a very harmful mutation by creating a premature stop codon, and that is something that is called a nonsense mutation. So of the point mutations, there are silent mutations, which just happen to code for the exact same amino acid. There are missense mutations, which may or may not be a significant thing, where you change the identity of one amino acid, and that may or may not have a significant effect on the resulting protein. And then there will be nonsense mutations, and those prematurely stop it, and those are highly significant. So silent is not going to be experienced. A missense may be something that is significant, and a nonsense will be significant. You're basically stopping the translation before it is supposed to be stopped. Those are our three types of point mutations, and remember those involve taking out one base and putting a different one in instead. The other type of mutation that you can encounter is called a frame shift mutation. And the reason they call it frame shift is because if we look down here, we have set up an example of a potential amino acid sequence that we can encode. Notice that it always starts with AUG, the methionine start codon, AUG, and then the next codon is CCG, and so that encodes for CCG proline. And then we have AAU, which is AAU, ASN, asparagine, and so on. And so we have these different codons that we're going to be producing. A frame shift involves adding or removing a base to this. And what it does is it throws off the reading frame for everything. So for example, let's just say that we were to insert a an, um, uh, base here. So let's just say we input, um, it could even be a G, it could be the correct one. But notice that what this does is as soon as we put a G in here, now we push this G over to this one. And so now it's going to be a GAA reading frame. And then it's going to be a UGG reading frame. And every subsequent one has a chance of being the wrong amino acid because what we had is a set of divisions of three, and now we've pushed that all over by one. So the last member of what was previously the right codon is now moved into the next codon. So it becomes GAA instead of AAU. And that's a significant difference here. And you can see that with additions or with deletions. If we were to delete one of these, you'd see a shift of the reading frame back once again. And now, let's just say we were to delete this C and forget that we'd added a G. So we'll delete this C here. Now we have a CGA, and we have an AUG, a methionine, and so on. But notice that this also changes the reading frame. And if you change the reading frame, that means that every single amino acid downstream from that has a pretty high likelihood of being incorrect. And that will result in a protein that usually has very, very different properties from the desired ones. Now, there is one case where a frame shift mutation, either an addition or a deletion, will not have as significant an effect. And that is if it happens in quantities of three. If you're going to add three bases, then yes, you're going to shift the reading frame down by one, but the identity of all of these, it will still have AAU grouped together. So let's just restore this CCG here, and let's just say that we inserted another GGG. This is an interesting case because we're going to have one more amino acid in there, which may or may not have an effect, but we're still going to get the same codons being read within the same frame, and so, every, so it'll basically be the exact same amino acid sequence, except it has one extra item that's less likely to be important. And similarly, if you were to subtract three, once again, the reading frame stays the same. If we were to get rid of all of these, 
and just eliminate that entirely, we would still have the AAU and the GGG all being encoded with, by the same codon within an appropriate reading frame. So frame shift mutations tend to be quite deleterious. They tend to be something that results in significant alterations of the protein because if you add one item here or you remove one item here, that is going to shift the entire reading frame down and it will totally alter the nature of your amino acids. However, if it's an addition or subtraction of something in a factor of three or maybe six or something like that, the reading frame is going to be the same and these codons will remain intact and result in the desired amino acid sequence. And so mutations are an interesting component that are frequently tested and they can have various effects. Remember that mutations are DNA mutations, things that can be passed down to future generations or just passed down to future cells when your DNA replicates and cells divide through mitosis. But realize that there are some point mutations like silent mutations and in some cases some missense mutations that tend to have very minor effects. And others like nonsense mutations that encode a premature stop codon or a frame shift that is not in a multiple of three, these are ones that can have serious effects and will very likely result in defective proteins and all sorts of physiological problems. Mm -hmm.